So ChatGPT has absolutely blown up lately and understandably so because it is really impressive. But things are already getting wildly, wildly out of hand with what it can do for you, your publishing business and just making money online in general. So with the release of any new resource that can speed up content creation, naturally comes wild, unrealistic, unreliable, and of course, just stupid ways of using said resource. Now, don't get me wrong, I love ChatGPT. I have it open pretty much every time I do some work on a new browser. However, I do sense that something bad is on the horizon for people getting a little too enthusiastic over the usage of it. So lots of videos coming out now, pressing the idea that you can create full-blown books or you know full blown full blown children's books as well and you can just copy what chat gpt is telling you you can upload down to amazon or wherever and make a ton of money and i'm not so sure i don't think that's going to end too well for people that are operating that way for me i'm holding out much longer before i even consider using chat gpt for direct content creation but saying that there are a ton of ways that i use chat gpt to enhance my publishing business that don't involve just directly creating content through it so in today's video i'm going to go over all the ways that i use chat gpt for my publishing business and these are probably going to be things that you've never heard of or considered before because people are too busy telling you to use it to create ketogenic recipes for your next cookbook so let's take a look at some of the ways that chat gpt can help us with our publishing business so keep in mind here we are using chat gpt to help us with our publishing business we are not relying on chat gpt okay so in my opinion obviously you should only be using chat gpt to get the mental ball rolling and then go from there so with that in mind let's take a look at some of the ways that we can use it the first way being, of course, that you can use it to help you create the book title for your book. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and said, create me a book title for a 100 page Easter word search for children. Make it sound fun. And it's come back with Easter extravaganza, 100 pages of exciting word searches for kids. And then I've asked for 10 more, blah, blah, blah. So you could take a look at that, see the elements that you like and use them in your title again would not recommend just copying and pasting them but you can take some inspiration from the titles that chat gbt has created for you so next up we have creating product descriptions for your book now again you want to make sure that whenever chat gbt is giving you back significant amounts of content you want to go through it alter it and make it completely unique so for example here what i've done is write me an amazon product description for my 100 page easter word search for kids make it sound fun and use soft selling tactics which may be slightly ambitious and then it's come back with this here so what i would typically do is to just copy all of that put it into a notepad or wherever or into word and then just edit it until i'm happy with the way that it looks and then that way it's pretty much guaranteed to be a hundred percent original and what we can do if we want to add bullet points into our description is to ask chat gpt to do just that so what I've said is do that again, but add five bullet points as to why my product is so good. And then it's going to come back, hopefully, with five reasons why our 100 uh, page Easter word search for kids is perfect activity for your child. And it's going to have five bullet points here that you can include into your product description. Again, you would want to alter these to make them 100% original. And of course, you need to be most definitely checking what they say, because if ChatGPT comes back with something like different levels of difficulty and your word search or whatever does not have different uh, different levels of difficulty, then of course, that's going to be misleading for the customer. So next up, we have creating outlines for children's storybooks. So what you'll find at the moment on YouTube and what you will find plenty of content on on YouTube in the near future is people using chat GPT to create full blown short stories and children's books and then uploading them pretty much directly onto Amazon. So probably taking them over to Canva, creating um, their children's storybook that way. Now, I'm not on board with doing things that way, but I do think that you can use chat GPT to give you that kind of outline for a children's book that you're working on. So if I'm racking my brain here, I think typically when it comes to uh, a kid's book, the storylines will be quite basic, but they do follow some sort of arc where there is like um, an introduction then a critical incident and then a resolution at the end, like that type of simplistic arc to a book. So what I've done is to ask ChatGPT to write me a typical outline for a children's storybook arc 
about a dog called Peter. I'm not sure if I've worded that correctly, but what it's come back with here is the introduction. So introduce Peter, the lovable and energetic dog who's the main character. Uh, show Peter's routine. Uh, you know, step two of this arc is the enticing incident. Then step three is the rising action. Then there's the climax and then there's a the falling action. And then there's the, the conclusion, which I assume is the resolution slash happy ending. Okay, so next up is niche research for things like coloring books. So for example, what I've asked ChatGPT is to give me 50 page ideas for my coloring book about magical creatures. So if you're looking for some inspiration for the type of images that you want inside a coloring book, for example, then you can do that here by asking ChatGPT. So what it's come back with here is, sure, here are 50 page ideas, blah, blah, blah. A unicorn prancing through a meadow, a dragon breathing fire over a castle, a fairy sitting on a mushroom, a giant troll under a bridge, a griffin with its wings spread, a uh, kraken attach attacking a ship, etc, etc. So if you're really desperate for ideas and you don't want to scroll through um, other people's magical creatures coloring book and says to see what they've included, then you can use ChatGPT to give you some ideas as to what you want to include into your magical creatures coloring book. And you know, you can kind of just take when it comes to doing research for your book, you can kind of just continue the chat with ChatGPT. So what I'm doing here is like asking it how complex should these type of images be? For example, I'm not sure it's gonna give you the result that I want, um, but the complexity of the images in your coloring book depends on, yeah, the age group and all sorts of things like that. But my point here is that if you wanna ask it, you know, how thick should the lines be? What's the typical age of the audience for these type of books? Then you can continue that chat on and on and on just to keep getting a better idea of the target audience, right? Okay, so next up we have using ChatGPT to help you pick a font for your book cover. So again, you would want to ultimately test this yourself, but you might fall upon something here that just looks great because, you know, there are a lot of font options. So what I've done here is ask, what are some good paid version Canva fonts? I'm not sure if that's actually gonna work. Um, that I can use for my children's Easter word search book. So I've actually just loaded up um, Canva here. I'm gonna select some of these to see if they actually look appropriate or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Bangers and Luckiest Guy to see if these actually look appropriate for that type of book. So let's search for Bangers. Yeah, I think so. I think that's quite good. And Luckiest guy as well and again i would say that looks slightly better but um yeah you get the point it's going to give you some inspiration for what type of font that you can go to make sure it's in theme with the um the niche that you're in next up we have using it to help you create your pen name so what i've done here is to ask it to give me 10 pen name ideas for my coloring book brand make them rhyme um sure here are 10 blah 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 artistic bliss does that rhyme i don't think so colorful soul again does that rhyme Rainbow Doodle, definitely doesn't rhyme. Chromatic Dreams, Imaginative Ink, Scribble Joy, Whimsical Strokes, Vibrant Visions. Uh, you know, these, these don't rhyme, so I might regenerate these and see if it's gonna play ball with me now. Doodle Poodle, Ink Blink, Sketch, Wretch, Art Heart, Draw Claw, Color Scholar, Shade Made, Brush Crush. I mean, uh, yeah, that's that, they do sound quite good. But I think if you're going to be using ChatGPT to help you create a pen name, you 1 billion percent want to make sure that other people aren't using it. So to avoid that, we might not want to make them rhyme because that's probably going to be, you know, typically that's the type of names that have already been used. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to do that again, but don't make it rhyme this time and make them sound funny and weird. And let's just see what it comes back with. And just to reiterate, you want to always make sure you are checking everything that you're doing. Um, with chat gpt coloring cactus paint slinger scribble gnome i quite like scribble gnome artichoke artist marker maverick sketchy sasquatch painting pigeon painting pigeon i don't know is, is that funny is that any good is it weird i don't know uh, but yeah you know these are just as it says some ideas to inspire you next up we have risky niche ideas so typically when i go after a niche it's something that's proven to be selling but within that i think you can help chat gpt to give you some ideas that aren't typical so for example what i've done here is to ask chat gpt to give me 20 ideas for popular adult coloring books that aren't typical so what you can see here it comes back again obviously with the results and it has a lot of different ideas mandela is inspired by street art illustrations of traditional folk tales and myths from various cultures 
Um, but the one that I noticed here, and this is the, one of the ways that you could use ChatGPT in this instance, is um, number 12 here, coloring book featuring botanical illustrations of poisonous plants. So if you were trying to create a botanical coloring book, for example, and you saw that that was selling well, which they are on Amazon, and you wanted to do something slightly different, then you could be the guy that has a poisonous plants or girl that has a poisonous plants version of that type of book. And that way, when you get ranked on the first page, uh, people see all the typical botanical type of books, and then they see yours with your nice green poisonous plants. Um, you know, you might stand out just an idea. Next up, we have color combinations for your book cover. So for example, what I've done here is to ask ChatGPT, what are some eye-catching eye, <laughs> eye color combinations for my botanical coloring book for adults? And it comes back and says, there are many beautiful combinations here, purple and yellow, blue and green, pink and orange. And I actually did like a little test earlier because I have my uh, addition and subtraction workbook that I thought was a pretty punchy color. Um, the reason I went with blue and yellow was because it looks so punchy. Um, so what I'm gonna do is ask ChatGPT what a good color combination for a addition and subtraction workbook for um, grade two would be. So I've just asked what is a good color combination for an addition and subtraction workbook for children in grade two. And it's gonna come back when designing an addition and subtraction workbook etc etc engaging easy on the eyes blue and yellow the combination is bright and cheerful um etc etc and that's the reason why when we created ours we went with the blue and yellow i'd be lying if i said that i just happened to do this without checking before making the video because i definitely did check that beforehand but it's still a good sign that you know chat gbt's information is kind of good isn't it Next up, we have ideas for making your books more engaging. So it's mega important, especially if you're doing things like children's books, that you make them engaging. You wanna make sure that the adult comes back to the listing page and lets everyone else know with a five-star review that their child had a wonderful time uh, with the book that you've created for them. So for example, how can I make my maze book for kids more engaging for children of ages four to eight? And then it comes back with, here are some ideas. Yeah, use colorful and engaging graphics, bright, bold, and colorful graphics. You know, some of these are obvious, make the major challenging, but not too difficult, obviously. Add a storyline. Okay, that's quite a good idea. Introduce a simple storyline to your maze book to make it more engaging. You could create characters throughout the maze, child trying to find their way home, find treasure, animals trying to find their way, blah, blah, blah. Um, include more fun and activity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so yeah, plenty of ideas here to give you an idea as to how to make your books more engaging and i like this one here specifically um, for for kids books is to include some kind of reward system because children as it says children love to be rewarded for their efforts so next up we have early education workbook standards and of course with this i would hate to just rely purely on chat gpt i think you should like i say a million times is to always do more research off of chat gpt as well but when i was creating my addition and subtraction workbook uh, you know it it was frustrating to not know which resources to use to actually understand the different standards and things like that. However, on ChatGPT, I think we get some pretty accurate information here. So I've asked, what are the US and UK math standards for grade two? So that's gonna, if you're creating two different books, one for the US, one for the UK, you'd obviously be able to see the difference in standards here. So in the UK, we call this year. And I think that is actually reflected in ChatGPT's response here, which says the UK, uh, US math standards for grade two and the UK math standards for year two. So I've just gone through and asked a few more questions. Like the reason this hasn't produced more is because I, I cut them off. I stopped it from generating the response because it was getting so long. But for example, what are time telling standards in the US for grade one? Recognizing the hour and half hour marks on analog clock phase, telling time to nearest half an hour, etc. etc. So the point is when you're doing when you're creating books that they, they need to be well researched, then you can definitely use ChatGPT as a good starting point for that. Next up, we have publishing your book wider. So by wider, I mean distributing your book through different places like Ingram Spark. So this is just something that I've recently decided to start doing. And I had a few questions and actually went to chat GPT to get a few answers. 
So for example, where can I buy ISBNs for books? I'm based in the UK. I could have asked, I could have done that on Google, but I like to have a definitive answer. And in the UK, if we're buying ISBN, we have to go to Nielsen's ISBN agency, which is what I did. And we have the website that we can go straight to there. From there, I wasn't sure whether I could publish my existing KDP books onto Ingram Spark by using a different ISBN. So buying the ISBN and then uploading those books through Ingram Spark whilst having the existing book on Amazon as well. And ChatGPT has come back with this answer here. That is something that I'm still concerned about. And I, of course, you know, to keep reiterating myself, I will confirm that by going to Amazon, uh, you know, support or Ingram Spark support, uh, just to find out, you know, just to make 100% sure that I'm doing things legitimately, which is what you should do as well. So next up, we have help creating manual ad campaigns for your books. Now, I'm hesitant to recommend this because of the, the variables involved with creating ad campaigns and having success with them, but you can use ChatGPT to give you some ideas. So for example, I've gone ahead and said, give me 10 keyword ideas for my KDP ad campaigns for my botanical coloring book for adults. Sure, here are 10 adult coloring book, mindfulness, stress relief, uh, coloring therapy, floral designs. So for me, that's too broad. And if I was going to be using ChatGPT to get some campaign ideas, some keyword ideas for manual campaigns, what I'd want it to do is to be much more specific. So sort of like what they call it, long tail keywords. So what I've done here is asked to give me 10 more ideas, but make each keyword phrase at least, let's go with five words long and then see what ChatGPT is going to come back with. Sure, here are 10 keywords come on hurry up man now, number one intricate botanical coloring pages relaxing nature themed illustrations for adults botanical art for mindfulness and medication stress busting so again if you're looking to try and get cheaper clicks for your manual ad campaigns then you can definitely consider doing this and you can play around with it and ask you know i went with like five words long you can say give me them that are give me some that are four words long for example and I'm going to be very ambitious here and ask what the most searchable terms are. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm sorry I don't have access to. Of course it doesn't. But, you know, you can use this to test some campaigns when it comes to going for... If you're, in a, if you're going for like a really competitive niche and you don't want to spend too much, then you can try looking at targeting these kind of uh, long tail keywords to get those cheaper clicks instead of going after like really expensive auto campaigns because if you are in a competitive niche and you put out an auto campaign for like 50 cents then you know you're going to blow through that budget pretty quickly whereas if you create you know manual campaigns out of um, very targeted longer tail keywords then you might have success with getting cheaper clicks okay so those are just some of the ways that you can actually use chat gpt without having it just directly create you content that you then go ahead and upload like a foolish person onto amazon kdp so there are some areas that i think you can use chat gpt that i'm not that comfortable with so things like creating having it create quotes for you for example or other short content that you might be tempted to use it for such as things like um you know making jokes for a joke book or something like that those are the type of things that i would avoid and obviously you want to completely avoid trying to make longer um, books using chat gpt you know there are definitely some ways that we can use chat gpt to enhance our publishing business and speed up our, our niche research and things like that so that's the end of this video if you've liked the video and you would like a part two make sure that you like this video subscribe and do all those things and i'll see you next wednesday